Hello again, uh, it's Peter from uh, Record Power. Um, following on from our last video uh, where I um, stripped down the DML305 with a view to changing the bearings on the, um, on the spindle. I've already fitted one of the bearings on there and put that in place. Um, and I've marked the shaft so as I know where the hole is on there. So as when we come to put it together it gives me a bit of a clue to um, align it up. But before I put the other bearing on, which I'll show you shortly, I need to fit the rear bearing in. And just before I put that in, I need a little bit of oil, just as a little bit of a lubricant around the actual bore itself. Just help the bearings go in. Before I put the bearing in, I'm going to put the actual spring washer into this one, so that fits inside of there. The bearing itself, up to there. What I want to try and do is try and eye it up as possible to square it up. Now I've made a little drift to start it off. But because it's wood, it's going to absorb quite a bit of the, the force. So what you may find is you go in so far and get yourself, um, I've just got a little bolt and a washer, just to drive it home the last bit. and firmly. What you want to try and avoid is hitting the actual uh, bearing case itself. So either cover the whole of the bearing or like uh, with something like that or say a shaft with a decent size washer on there so you can get a bit of leverage on it. So like I said I've already fitted the one bearing so if I turn the head round now so I can get him from the other side. So basically on that I used the hand wheel shaft as um, a slide hammer. Just give that a little wipe, it should be clean, it's just a little bit of grease and stuff around there. And just a little dab of oil on the shaft itself. Try and line it up as best as you can. And then I've also got the the gear that I took off, which I'll put down. So that's the same size bore as the bearing. What I can do now is just tap it on the rest of the way. If you've got a vice, you can use the actual gear itself to help you put it on, just to drive it up. And then just tap it the last bit. Make sure it's all nice and home on there. So now I can look to introduce it into the head again, and this is the fiddly bit. So I've marked the the where the hole is, so that slides onto there. 
So if we introduce it first into there, and we'll rub that sprocket onto the shaft, you should start picking up the set the back bearing around about the same time. You just try and keep it square as you're going in. first then I'll have a look at putting the actual sprocket on so that's in now the best way to do this unless you're leaning down and is probably to turn it over Make sure your cables are out of the way and get yourself a couple of blocks of wood or something like just to support it as you put it over and so just be careful you don't catch the cables. me to see inside a little bit. Just make sure that's nice and safe. So it's just resting on those bits of timber. And what I can do then is turn it around to align the sprocket. Got a little T-bar this time, this might help me a little bit better. So it is a fiddle getting this in here. Basically how you look is and I've got it first time he says. So make sure that's nice and tight. And don't overdo it. That's all okay. So what I can do then is stand it back up again. And just check the index position's okay. So I'll reinstall this. Knock that down, that's as much as that needs. And that's back into my index positions. So that's okay. So the next thing is put my switch back together again. That can come out. Just be careful your cables as you put them back in. You can't put this in wrong. So you've got two holes at the bottom, one hole at the top, and obviously it's unplugged before you do so. I've got the three little screws in here, little fat fillet ones. This can go in there. Don't lock them up individually, put them back in one at a time. Done. 
Now if I turn around again, so that's all in position. What I want to do now is put the, the motor pulley back on. Onto there. And you've got a flat on your shaft, so line that up onto there. And you've got a couple of grub screws to put back inside now. Just pinch that up first of all. And what I need to do is, before I put the belt back on, I've got to line this up. So this is... Um, your belt's in line, and then you've got your hand wheel one. Let's go back on there again. So you've got a couple of grub screws on there as well, posing flat on there, and you've got a dimple on there. If I pinch those up first. to line my main pulley up. So I can put my belt on, I'll put the fine out of a grub screw and fit that onto there. Just set that up a little bit. I want to still want a little bit of flex in there. So that's okay. Put my centre shaft back in again. And lock that up. I still think it's easier to remove these three bottom screws than it is the screws with the nuts and washers on. So that's nearly all ready to run. But what I will do is actually put that little grub screw in. Make sure well, it should be all right anyway, but just that the screw goes below the surface of the poly V belt. And the final turnaround. Shut this off. Check it's not in the index position. And we go again. 
bearings ideally what I should do to this because our new bearings is actually put on the lowest speed and let the bear the the um, the grease work the way around the bearings first because they're all uh, loaded these bearings and just give it time Right, so in a low speed, let it run for a short while before you start putting in the really high speed, just to get the, uh, the bearings lubricated. Um, they say they're packed, so it's been packed in there, so just let it run for 5-10 minutes, something like that, just to get it all settled in again, um, before you actually start um, your turning operations you're going to do on there. Um, I understand one of the things that's been requested is uh, doing some work on the maxi. Uh, so well, that's one we're going to have to look at, but I'll probably have to do that in the training room or get another colleague to do that in the training room. Um, but I um, hope this one has been of some use for you. Um, I'll catch up with you again shortly. Cheers. Bye for now.